Let's take a look at the decimal basics questions. Now questions one to seven are non-calculator. So which is bigger, 1.2 or one? Uh, well, if you're not sure, you could always write 1.2 and one as a decimal, which is 1.0. As you can see in the units column, everything is the same, but in the tenths, two is bigger than zero, therefore 1.2 is bigger than one. Question two, what's bigger, 4.72 or 4.66? Well, in the units, all is equal, but in the tenths, we have a seven and a six. Seven is bigger than six, so 4.72 is bigger than 4.66. Question three, 7.34 and 7.39. Everything is the same in the units. Everything is the same in the tenths column, but in the hundredths column, we've got a nine and a four. Since nine is bigger than four, 7.39 is bigger than 7.34. Question number four, 5.20, 5.201. Now, when you're comparing decimals that are of different lengths, you might want to fill any blanks with a zero. This makes it much easier. All is equal in the units, all is equal in the tenths, all is equal in the hundredths, but now in the thousandths, one is bigger than zero, therefore 5.201 is bigger than 5.200 or 5.20. Question five, we need to put these in order smallest to largest. So this one's fairly simple since we can put them in order just from the value of the units column. We've got a six, a nine, a five, and a seven. Well, the smallest of those numbers is a five. So 5.2 is gonna be first. Six is the next smallest, so 6.8, then 7.4, then 9.9. .9. Question six, smallest to largest. So this is a bit harder because we can see that they all have uh, one before the decimal point. Let's just write them out, one on top of another, 1.38, 1 1.25, 1 1.23, and 1.3. With the 1.3, I'm gonna put in a zero so that all the decimals are of equal length. Now we know that they are all equal in the units, but in the tenths column, we've got a three, a two, a two, and a three. Now two is smaller than three, so one of these two numbers is the smallest. So now we're gonna compare the, the number that is in the hundredths column, five and a three. Three is smaller than five, so therefore 1.23 is the smallest and 1.25 is the next smallest. Now we're just comparing 1.38 and 1.30. All is equal in the units, all is equal in the tenths, but in the hundredths, We've got a zero compared to eight. Now zero is less than eight, so 1.30 is the next smallest number. But remember, in the list it was 1.3, not 1.30, although 1.3 and 1.30 has the same value, and therefore the largest number is 1.38. Question number seven, let's write the numbers out. 4.204, 4.82, 4.88, 4.99, 4.99, 4.99, 4.99. Again, any blanks, I'll just put a zero in. So everything is the same in the units. In the tenths column, we've got two, eight, eight, two. Now two is smaller than eight, so one of these two numbers is the smallest. Let's look at the next column, which is gonna be the hundredths column. We've got a zero and a nine. Zero is smaller than nine, so this number here is the smallest. So 4.204, that's the smallest number, therefore, the next smallest is gonna be the 4.290. So which one of these two is the next smallest? Everything has the same value in the units. Everything has the same value in the tenths, but in the hundredths, we've got a two and a one. One is smaller than two, so this is gonna be the next smallest number, 4.811. Therefore, the largest number is 4.820, except in the list it was 4.82, and for that matter, this number in the list was 4.29 because it was us that added on the extra zero just to make it easier to compare. For questions eight, nine, and 10, we can use a calculator, which is helpful. So 8a, what is the difference in weight? So that means difference means we're doing a subtraction of Wallace and Morris. So Wallace 23.1, Morris 28.5. So since we're doing subtraction, it makes sense to subtract the smaller number from the larger number, otherwise we'll get a negative value. 28.5 minus 23.1 is 5.4 centimetres. 
How much do they weigh all together? Well, we simply need to add 23.1 plus 25.2 plus 28.5, and that comes to a total of 76.8 centimetres. Question 9a, how much more money does Lucy have than Alma? That's going to be a subtraction. So 290.78 minus 285.63, that comes to a total of £5.15. How much do they have all together? So that means we just need to add these amounts. And if we add them all together, and for Diogo, you can type into your calculator 281.8 or 281.80. It makes no difference. And you'll get a combined total of £858.21. Question number 10. I think for me, the easiest thing to do is to turn 1.34 metres into centimetres. So that's 134 centimetres. So after one year, Tommy is going to be 15 centimetres more than 134. So 134 plus 15 is 149. So uh, Tommy is 149. Evie by 7 centimetres. So 134 plus 7 is 141. And Caden, if we add 5, that's 139. However, you might want to, the question doesn't state whether they want the answer in centimetres or metres, um, but you should be comfortable putting these into metres again, just dividing all these numbers by 100. So it'd be 1.49 metres for Tommy, 1.41 metres for Evie, and 1.39 metres for Caden. And after one year, then their combined height is simply going to be 1.49 plus 1.41 plus 1.39 and that comes to a total of 4.29 metres.